It's good. good. It was a bit like so in Walmart, here so in Waterloo. Now, Walmart, I don't know if it's the biggest supermarket in the world. And I believe that the price here so is Meeste van die goed goedkoper in Suid-Afrika, maar ons uh, cameraman, maar jy moet so dat te kry om alles te, te charge, ons is bezig om baie op te neem, maar in elk geval. As ons die weer opneem nie, weet ons het hier so gewees in Walmart <laughs> in Waterloo. <laughs> Ons rijd dan hier naar de Moine toe, waar die hoofdstad van Iowa is. En natuurlijk daar gaan ons ISG besoek, terwijl die Intelligent Solutions Group, waar die technologische hart van John Deere vorm. Ons is nou hier so by die ISG gebouw. Nou, dit is bloody koud vanmorgen. Ek het uh, nie kans gesien om my twee kort broeke aan te trek nie. Som trend so minus 1, En lyk my het gaan sneeuw later. Maar anyway, ons is hier so in, in, in een nete dop. Hierdie is waar die slim manne is. Hierdie is technologie dier en dier. Dit is waar jou programmeerders sit, jou koordeerders, om je idee te gee, is uh, dit sikke snaakse kamers waar die manne tafeltennis speel en handsokkerbal, hy voesbolgoeters, tot die type van een rolbal of een handrolbal. Dan het hulle ook natuurlijk koeldrank hier, so hulle het Pepsi, alles op uh, soveel as wat jy kan drink, um, heel dag lang, en teendeel ek het skaam gekry, later toe Hein en Wiekar bezig was om die Pepsi te drink, soos wat die ouwe water uit, die tuins lang, jy weet as die waarheid, maar nie, maar ek het, ek het op camera, ek het op camera. Maar in elk geval, of jy in landbouw is, en of jy nie in landbouw is nie, hierdie is interessante goed, fascinerende goed is wat met technologie in die toekomst te doen het. Moet ons blijf kom luister, jy gaan baie interessant vind. Philippe, please introduce yourself to my fellow South African. Sure. So my name is Felipe Santos. I'm originally from Brazil uh, and I'm here now in the US working on the company here, uh, responsible for our product marketing for Operation Center, our digital platform with John Deere. So there's a snow blizzard on the way outside, minus one Celsius. Good weather in Brazil, is it a culture shock? No, this is way like severe winter for us in Brazil. So actually I've been lucky with the winter this time, like uh, last couple of weeks has been, it's been pretty nice, but yeah, it's a way different than what I'm used to. <laughs> Let's talk about technology. I mean, I, 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 it's interesting how obviously Formula One technology feeds mainstream cars, vehicles, right? So everything that's developed up there, what is the, are there similarities of what you guys are doing in agriculture or tech wise, if you have to, you know, draw comparisons between these two worlds? Um, yes, I think I think a lot of the the technology that is developed at Formula Formula is the, is like a, a a test mode for bringing to the industry and then to like to regular consumer in the end of the day. So like from for, for us in agriculture, um, I think I think we can position ourselves like on one of the the companies that are actually introducing a lot of the new technology and and, and leveraging technology from other industries like. Uh, a lot of the codes on machine learning and then even like on uh, artificial intelligence, the use of imagery, we does import that from other industries as well to use in the agriculture space. So I think that are pa parallels there. Um, and then especially on a, on an agriculture world well, where uh, it's not like a, a continuously cycle, right? Like, so like you have one planting season a uh, year, so you test this year for introducing and then test again next year. So like the, the, the development cycle, it's a little bit uh, slowly compared to a formula one, but it's it's pretty similar in that regard to, to test early and then introducing to scale that up. So Philippe and Kaelin, um, when we talk about JD Link, it's a, it's a buzzword um, in our markets. Customers frequently ask about JD Link, what the value is in JD Link and what the specifics is around JD Link. Can you maybe expand a little bit more on what the, the workaround is and how that 
might affect the customer's operation, what the value in, in JD Link is. Sure, so I can, I can cover that. So the JD Link modem, um, if it is connected, it automatically captures machine data, agronomic data as you're doing the work with your equipment so that it automatically can populate in a tool such as John Deere Operations Center. And the value in that is always having visibility of your machine operating and what the machine health is. Yeah, there's a vast variety of, of value, whether that's planning and setting up your work or monitoring green work or even looking at it on the back end from an agronomic perspective and analyzing the job done so that you can match um, the work that you planned and decided to do with the outcome. And maybe it's important to mention uh, behind that uh, JD Link is the initially we, we we have JD Link as our digital platform. Like now all around the, the globe, uh, we have John Deere Operation Center and JD Link is really like the modem that goes in pretty much almost every machine now that we manufacture uh, out in our factories. And uh, the JD Link services, which is like really like connecting that piece of equipment with the internet. So like whatever the job that is being done in the field or, or the machine data that is being collected from that piece of equipment then goes to the cloud into the John Deere Operation Center that is both for uh, agriculture customers, consumer customers, uh, John Deere uh, forestry customer customers, John Deere construction customers, everyone now use the same uh, platform called a John Deere Operation Center. So with JD Link, there's always a benefit of the dealers having visibility of the machines that's moving around um, and being proactive within making sure that the machines are, um, we, we do preventative maintenance or we do preventative causes of, of, of damages, if I can put it like that. So how does that affect customer operations and productivity? Yeah, in the end of the day, like I think that narrows down to one word, where like it's really about connecting. So we are connecting every piece of equipment, we're connecting data with the decision makers, and we're connecting all the steps of the production system. So like when we're saying that we're connecting that piece of equipment, that's of course like, okay, you're connecting that to the cloud, but in the end of the day, you're connecting that around of all the people and services and, and support that that equipment needs uh, in the field, including the, your dealership, right? Like your dealership, not, if you allow, uh, the customer is always in control of that connection and then allowing that data to get access to your dealer or to your trusted advisors. Uh, uh, the dealer can take a look on what are the problems that that machine is having, uh, what are the potential uh, next service that can that that they can provide to that machine to avoid machine downtime, right? Like so, like uh, instead of in the middle of the season you are planting and you are rushing through your planting window there, instead of you waiting the machine to stop, the dealer is able to take a look and see, okay, looking into the data and then that the diagnostic codes that I'm seeing here. I can proactively go there and then before you notice, you're getting a, a call from your dealership say, hey, what about us going and do that service be before you get stopped at where actually you need to run in the field? How, how old can the machine be? I mean, how far can you go back to uh, implementing the JD Link? I mean, is there a, is there a, a limit to, to the age of the machine? It varies with the machine models and depending on the, of the electrical uh, infrastructure of the machine. But back from 2011, uh, we pretty much have compatibility of uh, insta installing a modem uh, for the John Deere equipment. Uh, we know for that. And then, and also like uh, now we know that for us to really uh, be the operating system of the farm with the John Deere operation center, we're also going after on whatever color or whatever piece of equipment to connect, not only the John Deere equipment. Right, like for you to really having the operational benefits of having that machine, uh, of that fleet optimized, we need to connect all, all the equipment, right? From any sort of grower standpoint is you want to be the best steward of the land that you can be. And operations center and really the entire suite of our, from our precision tech perspective allows for you to document, understand what types of practices you've done in the past and, and moving forward to be more more progressive in some of those sustainability acts that you're doing, whether it's how many times have you um, made a pass on the same pass in the same field? How much fuel are you using? Is the um, application prescription that you're using, whether it's herbicide, pesticide, et cetera, um, is it working or are you over applying? Do you need to come up with a new plan? Um, 
effectively to make sure your soil health is stays um, as optimal as you would want as well. So all of these things, um, although from a business perspective are very important, we know we know that our, our growers, um, really for them, it's, it's about the pride in their operation and how they're operating and what they're doing on their farm to be stewards. Now to my tracker, friends, our aventure in the free state of America is going on. And now, as the life is hard, climb net up a John Deere tracker and plug forward to the bottles.